And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother, as always, here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. We are, we are back once again with a with another class entry for Veil of the Void after we got rid of after we got the um, look at some bad shit in in tabletop out of our system, which ended up getting worse because it because they because they just because they decided to do a review thing with fucking Polygon. Let's not go into that. Yeah, let's not and say we didn't. Exactly. Because we're because unlike unlike cert unlike um unlike certain people unlike certain people, <clears throat> Razor, I am far less interested in just accentuating all of the negative. Because that's fucking boring. Anybody can do that. Yep. There's a reason that the monastery has evolved. We like to bring the cool shit to the table. Mm -hmm. And with within that. That brings us that bringing in bringing in the cool shit is a nice segue for our second class, that being the field knight. Well, not not second class. This is our third class. Third class, yeah. But this is the first class that could be considered an outright offensive class because the the combat medic and the tinker lean more into support. They can certainly they certainly have their offensive capabilities, especially the field medic compared to its contemporaries. But they're going but they are going to be looked at as a support class. Yeah. The field knight not so much. And field knight looks like it's going to be a little more direct, boys. But it opens up with saying, The honor of being a field knight is a long-held tradition. They are fierce guardians, forcing adversaries to fight them with pure strength. They are neither bred nor built. Field knights are won through trial and training. When they feel the battle itself pumping through their veins, they have prevailed. The field knight is not your typical tank. They fly over the battlefield, dragging adversaries along the field with them, before smashing them into the wall. They fight aggressively and bravely absorb damage against them. As field knights progress, they learn to advance their talents in one of three paths. Preserver, Warlord, or Juggernaut. Save your X-Men jokes, we'll get to that later. Yeah. And I'm not going to try and do a bad Vinnie Jones accent. <laughs> but the the whole dragging adversaries and then smashing them into the wall... I am, for whatever reason, reminded of the slam dunk build that Gromek used to do a lot in Crossout. I can see it. I I also see um. Just what's ima what I'm imagining right now is Terrace Victoria grinding Zorin's face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just what I've got in mind right now. I'm like, can I do that? Please let me do that. Well, not just the face, the rest the rest of the head. <laughs> it starts with the face. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just doesn't Optimus Prime may have had the whole give me your fi give me your face thing in the ba in Bayformers. Ceres Ceres just went That's a nice face you got there. It's just, it's, it's a sh it's a shame it's going to be on the wall. It'd be a shame if somebody took you to Grindstown. <laughs> Um, or the or the obvious joke, nose to the grindstone. Yeah, that one is a pretty obvious one. Mm -hmm. Now, for moving past that, we have our starting proficiencies. So they're proficient in a chain saber. Hmm. <laughs> huh. It's probably not. It's probably not a combination of a chainsaw and a lightsaber, but that would be amazing. <laughs> I don't think it's a common combination of a chainsaw and a lightsaber. I think it's a 
more likely that we would hear someone wielding one of these screaming for the Emperor. Um, archaic melee weapons, great chain sword. So we've got both the chain, so we've got the chain sword and the eviscerator. <laughs> Sonic shield. Um, is this a is this a better version of a Terminator? And plasma rifle. Like all I'm thinking of is the time is the time that I struggled with playing Deathwing. Eh. Uh, proficient in heavy and medium armor, and proficient in rocket boots and jetpacks. So it's a Terminator with jump jets. Got it. That is a terrifying thought. I think you can do that in some of the newest rule sets. So. Yeah, but those are those are the same rule sets that decided to do that whole that um that rail that rail cannon with the towel that got everybody so pissed off. Yeah. So plus um we're not buttermilk bobs here. No, we're not. <laughs> <sighs> but as far as leveling up beyond first level, you add two D six or seven plus vitality to your max. And then we get our starting items. Rocket boots and a jetpack. Synthetic nice. heavy armor. 5d6 times 1,000 credits. A chain saber or a sonic shield. Or a great... Or a... Or a, a chain saber and sonic shield. Or a great chain blade and a power hammer. Or, or uh, Actually, power I, hammer. I think that's... I think that's three different things there, yeah. Either the combination of chain saber, sonic shield, a great chain blade, or a power hammer. Which is good because the idea of somebody w dual wielding a chain blade and a power hammer is the stuff of fucking nightmares. I mean, remember that if he's one of the dwarves, he has four arms and can wield two handed weapons for dual wielding by using two arms on each. Like I said, the stuff of fucking nightmares. I would definitely give a dwarf field knight a great chain blade and a power hammer. Or just get or just go full dwarf and give him two power hammers. No, the chain blade is his saw. Why are they good with axes and saws, monk? Elves live in trees. <laughs> Fair point. Um, <laughs> so then we start with our abilities at level one, and we've got we've got two exclusive ones. First being jump charge. While in combat and not adjacent to more than two adversaries, you may spend your movement to launch yourself forward in a direction you choose. You move up to twice your base movement forward, or you move up to your base movement and then charge up to your base movement in a straight line. If you run into a being, you both perform a contested vitality muscle check. If they fail, they are dragged with you and take 1, 2, 3, 5, d6 plus vitality force damage and are knocked prone. If they hit a solid object, like a wall, they take an additional 5, 9, 13, 17 force damage. If they are large or bigger adversary, your charge immediately ends after hitting them. The large being then takes 2, 3, 4, 7, D6 plus vitality force damage. This ability may be activated once every three rounds. The damage scales at levels 1, 5, 10, and 15. So... I like this. <laughs> it, it's... It's... Monk, do you know what this is? What? It's the fucking, um... Vanguard from Mass Effect. <laughs> the biotic fucking charge. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. One of the most fun classes you'll ever play in 2 and 3. Yeah. I'm already liking this a lot, though. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just gonna use these jet boosters to fuck y'all up! You want to know what hey. I? Um, <laughs> you want to know what I find funny? Beforehand, we had thought that the field knight was going to be the the soldier from Two Fort. One mm -hmm. level in, and we're we're not even done with the first level stuff, and already we've proven ourselves wrong. Uh huh. I think I think at this point, um, I don't think it I don't think it fits anything other than a demo knight. And even and even then, that's a de that's a demo knight with one of the with one of the more assholeish builds. 
that being sticky palm, sticky bombs and the Ulupor cable. <laughs> the sticky bombs be um not sticky bombs, sticky jumpers, sorry. Sticky jumpers, Ulupor caber. Yes, the caber only has one shot, but that one shot is all you fucking need. <laughs> and because the whole thing with sticky jumpers is to launch yourself. Well, that may well that makes it even that makes it even worse. I was just thinking your typical demo knight with a shield and charge. Yeah, and then I had to come along and make it worse. You did. <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. But then we have Flow of Battle, which is another which is its other exclusive. As you fight, the flow of battle floods through every swing, charging up the perfect strike. Once per turn, if you fail an attack, gain one battle charge. After gaining three battle charges, your next attack may automatically hit. You may store at most six battle charges, and they last until used. I'm getting the so strangest if you... case of Dejan Mustard. I know! I was about to say, where have we heard of a thing where if you fail to hit three times, you get an, some some type of advantage on your next attack? Mm -hmm. We like fail forward mechanics. Yep. So... At second level, we start we start getting non-exclusive materials. Starting with <laughs> Rocket Swing. You may activate this ability as an attack action. On a successful hit, the adversary takes the weapon's damage and must perform a contested muscle slash power check. If you succeed, the target is launched a set distance in a specific direction. They are knocked prone. This has a three-round cooldown. Large adversaries and above are unaffected and instead take plus half level in additional damage. Competitive bitch tossing! Yep. <clears throat> Using the rockets on your arms, apparently? Mm hmm Um. Uh, and it looks like it looks like there's there's um there's some special rules depending on what sort of weapons. So if you're doing single oh. or dual melee. The adversary is launched six squares in a direction in a 180 arc in front of your character. If you're using great weapons, you swing the adversary in a direction up to four squares away in a 360 arc around you. Wait, I can knock a character that's in front of me four squares behind me? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to play competitive bitch-tossing volleyball style. <laughs> Field Knight passes enemy to next person! Oh. And Rocket Fists. The adversary is launched three squares into the air with an uppercut. If you are wielding dual fists, you may choose to throw the target to the ground prone for an additional plus level force damage. It's high time! Yeah. <laughs> it's high time in Helmbreaker! Yep. It's good shit, mm -hmm. is what it is. And ranged, you and the adversary are knocked back five squares in opposite directions in a straight line. Oh, noisy cricket. Yep. Oh. And at sec and because it's second level because it's an even level, you get an extra skill point. At level three, you get chivalrous strike, which is an exclusive. When you roll three of a kind threes or fours on a successful attack, you perform a chivalrous strike. This grants you one battle charge point and recharges your rocket swing. Three round cooldown. What? <laughs> Hold on. If I get three threes or three fours on a successful attack, I, I get a battle charge point without failing anything. And if I've been using rocket swing, it gets recharged immediately. What? Um. That, that's, 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 uh... That's nice. I like it. Yep. Let's see. Then we at level four, you gain advancement training, one virtue point, and an expertise. At level five, you start you start on the path of your specialization. We'll get as always. We'll get to those later. At level six, you get rush of adrenaline. You find yourself fighting with more efficiency. You gain an additional attack action. At level oh. six, there's extra attack. Mm-hmm. But I mean, extra attack with a field knight is a 
I think it's a lot more, uh, a lot more effective. Yeah. Remember, remember how we said it was last time we said that we didn't really like extra attack because in base, like in in five E and in D, in the in D twenty systems like that, because of the fact that all the kits feel samey. But here, when you get an extra action of some sort, it's really nice. Mm. This this is the same thing. The the field knight is all about attacking. Even if it's just an additional attack action, that's a lot of shit you can do. Mm -hmm. You also get advanced. You also get activated launch. You may, as an attack action, attempt to attempt to attach a rocket to an adversary. If you succeed, they launch into the air five squares or eight squares in a direction in front of you. If you launch the target into the air, they hover for one round. Out of combat, you may freely attach it to an inanimate object and activate it. Does not affect large beings. <laughs> That's some Looney Tunes shit. It is Looney Tunes shit, and I am here for it. Uh, just a note: Rush of Adrenaline wasn't wasn't exclusive, but Activated Launch is not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and I can I can definitely I can definitely see that get that getting some use in. In order to knock somebody up in the air for one full round, which means that's a that's a full round of everybody getting free shots. If they're the last thing left, yeah. Oh, let's see. At level seven, advancement training, you also gain charge strike. Your weapons can be effectively used during charges. You can use your equipped weapon as an extra action during the charge. With and we have a we have a set of subtypes when it comes to it. So single melee, you may charge forward with your melee weapon aimed towards your adversary. If your jump charge ability hits a target, they are also inflicted with your weapon's damage. However, they are not knocked prone. So it's a choice between knocking them prone with your jump charge or getting weapon damage with your jump charge, and there could be some really interesting reasons you'd want your weapon damage. Yep. Um, dual melee, you may hold the weapons on each side of you. Any being the weapons passed through must make a jump charge save. On a failure, they take your weapon's damage. Ah, the, <laughs> wing, the, wing, the wing maneuver. Yeah. Or for, or for Zoids fans, the blade liger maneuver. Oh. Look, I like Chaotic Sentry. I know. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Shields. While equipped with a shield, you may sa you may save your charge and use it as a reaction when another ally takes damage. On activation, charge to your ally and absorb the damage they took. So, cover. Yeah. Really big cover, too. Staff and wands. Instead of charging a target, you may now teleport behind the adversary and unleash a blast of Ordic energy in a 5x5 five five area field centered on you. All adversaries within that field must perform the jump charge check or take your weapon's damage and push back three squares. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> here's our Nothing cold... personnel, kid! <laughs> yep, there's our cold steel joke. Cold steel, the hedgehog. Yep. And, ra and ranged, you unleash a blast after the charge, forcing all adversaries in a four-square cone in front of you to perform the jump charge check. On a failure, the units take your wep your weapon's damage. Oh, so, so um, so Doom 64 BFG. Or just the super shotgun. <laughs> Let's see. At, le and let, let me, d let me double check something. Okay, charge strike is an exclusive. I'd be very afraid if it. I'd be. It would be silly for it not to be. But some people might get creative. Um, very. At level eight, you get shields up, which is a non-exclusive. As an extra action, you may activate your allies' energy shields. If you do so, this grants five energy shields to three allies. These shields grant an additional five points at level twelve. These sh the shields last one hour or until deactivated. This ability may only be used once per day. So even, once again, even our even our ta even our offensive tanky boys have some support um, niche. 
Yep. Let's see. At level 9, you gain a Knight's Rage. When performing successful checks in combat, if you roll three fours, reduce the next damage you take by your power virtue. This does not stack. Well, considering that your, pow your power virtue can potentially max out at 9, if you roll three fours making any successful check, the next damage you take is just immediately reduced by 9. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And that's with perform for, for successful checks. Not It doesn't have to be attacks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a field knight, you're probably going to be doing a lot of attacks, but still. Yeah. Denny tech. It's an, but a nice rage is a non-exclusive... Um, abilities, so you've got that going for you. And yep. Rush of Battle. If you start a combat with no battle charges, you gain two. Huh. You can store up to six, Monk. Mm -hmm. Huh. What I'm reminded of with that is the is the feat that is the champion feat for Quick to Fight in 13th Age. Mm -hmm. Where they can where they can put a bit of a boost to the um, escalation die. Yeah. Let's see. At level ten, you gain your next um, ability from specialization. You also gain my strength is yours. You may sacrifice your reaction to allow two allies to use your power or vitality stat as their next power of, um, vitality check. This may be do done once every three rounds. There's a little bit more of that support showing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use my reaction so that you guys can add my power or vitality stat to your next power or vitality check. Go! Let's see. At 11, you gain advancement training. You also gain Beckon Their Wrath. You may, exp you may expend three or more battle charges to inflict taunt on an adversary that can hear you. If you spend six battle charges, you may... It, you may target three additional targets. Another use for your battle charges besides fail forward? Yep. This is fantastic. And also, holy shit, come at me, boys. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, at level 12, you gain protective reflexes. When another ally is hit by an attack within five squares of you, you may sacrifice your reaction to reduce the damage by eight points. That's a non-exclusive, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. At, thir at, thir at level 13, you gain the Tides of Battle. When you roll four fives during an attack, you may sacrifice your reaction to jump charge to another ally. Upon successful arrival... Adjacent adversaries take 3d6 plus vitality and ordic damage. Now there is a typical uh, space marine with jump jets move. <laughs> <laughs> At level 14, you gain advancement training. Gain one ver the usual stuff for advancement training. I don't know why I was reading that. At 15, you gain your next um, specialization ability. At 16, and both of these are non-exclusive, afterburners, af after a successful attack, you may use an extra action to release the afterburners of your weapon's rockets, inflicting half your weapon's damage on all adjacent adversaries. So, an easier, ver a version of whirlwind attack that doesn't piss me off. Yep. And cry of power. You unleash a battle cry as an action. All allies that can hear the call are inspired and gain an auto-hit die and inflict an additional 10 damage on their next attack. Adversaries that hear the cry are taunted. 12 square range, 4 round cooldown. <laughs> 12 square range? What? <laughs> and remember, this is a non-exclusive. Yeah, this is a non-exclusive. I also assume that by 12 square range, you mean 12 squares in a single direction, as in a 12 square radius. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fucked. <laughs> that is, that is, a, 
if we're if we're use if we're using the five foot rule, that is ascent that is essentially sixty feet in every direction. That's a t that's a hundred twenty foot sphere. Because mm -hmm. it's also sixty feet up, bunk. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep. Let's see. At 17, you gain advancement training. At level 18, you gain Unleash the Fury. Once per combat, you may unleash your built-up fury. You inflict six times battle charges in fire and ordic damage to all adversaries within eight squares of you. And it doesn't say that the battle charges are expended with this. No. Just... Just You're inflicting that much damage per how many battle charges you have. So... If you're at max, that's 36, 36 damage in fire and ordic to all adversaries within 8 squares of you. Mm -hmm. This is a... And again, within 8 squares, that's 8 squares in every direction, starting from you. <laughs> Making it an 80-foot sphere of fire and ordic damage. Mm -hmm. At level at level nineteen, you gain fuel conservation. Your jetpack does not go into cooldown after you use it. You have plus one bonus level in dodge while flying. You may cancel your flight and land in a spot up to ten squares away from your position as an extra action. See this. And at level twenty, you gain your specialization and your ultimate knight commandant. The blood of the field knights runs strong through you. You have mastered every step in your journey to the highest ranking, most respected, and most feared knight. You gain a permanent plus one in your vitality or power virtue. This may bring you above nine. Your armor difficulty is now permanently one level higher, at most tough five. If your armor is tough five already, you gain an additional 40 hit points. You gain proficiency in four melee weapons and three shields of your choice, and you gain resistance to all physical damage. Sorry, what? <laughs> you... What? Three shields, four melee weapons, resistance to all physical damage? What? Armor that is beefier than beefy? <laughs> <sighs> <clears throat> Okay, I'm happy with this. That's fine. I'm fine. That is that is a good. We've had to this that our benchmark for bad capstones is always the five E Ranger. This is yep. not that. Oh no, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It. Some of you may be going, but you guys say you hate things that are just plus numbers. Um, none of these are just plus numbers. A permanent additional virtue is modifying all checks with that virtue, any skills that use that virtue. That's widespread, wide-reaching. Um, an increased armor difficulty to make your armor at the most tough 5, or if you're already at tough 5, you get more HP. That might be plus numbers, but it's plus numbers that suit your role. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, additional proficiencies... In the, in the game where having proficiencies is a good thing and something that you have to buy with expertises otherwise? Um, that's fantastic. Then finally, resistance to all physical damage. Fuck you, every piece of physical damage is, is reduced in damage now. Mm -hmm. The Field Knight is supposed to be... A, ostensibly a tank. I mean... It's got the taunt. It's got the ability to cover... But goddamn, does it have damage output? <laughs> this is this is this is fantastic as a capstone. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then we get to the three the three um se the three subtypes, the three specializations. Yeah. I don't know why I said subtypes. The first one is preserver, and this is not a unique specialty. Mm -hmm. This this does not have our favorite little asterisk, buddy. Preservers control the flow of battle to strengthen their allies' resolve and hinder their adversaries' advancement. <coughs> they draw power from Eloa's realm. By channeling this protective power, the defense and health of allies are enhanced. At higher levels, you are even able to prevent death. Bastila, is that you? Ha <laughs> 
<sighs> so first we have eh, at um for our fit for our fifth level stuff. Divine Shield of Eloa. You beseech Eloa's protection and slam your shield into the ground, causing a large seven by seven field of light to be placed centered around your shield. A five square tall wall of lice bursts up from the edges. This wall presents adversaries ranged weapons from hitting any ally in the field, excluding premium and boss attacks. Any adversary entering this field must make a contested vitality check. On a fail, they suffer 3, 4, 5, 7, D6 pure damage. Adversaries in the field roll with minus 1 bonus die when attacking in the field. This lasts for 5 rounds or until the shield is removed. 5 round cooldown. This is the that... fuck your DACA strategy. This this is the fuck, fuck your team up strategy. I'm going to create a safe place. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. You also gain Rocket Toss. Hi, Mike Shell. How you doing? As an action, <laughs> you may throw your shield at a target or location. If it hits an adversary, it deals 10 physical damage and then falls directly in front of the adversary. You may activate Divine Shield of Eloa in this position as an extra action. You may call it back as a rearm action. If it then hits an adversary, it deals 5 plus pure damage. Level plus 5. Yeah, level plus pure, five damage. pure damage. So at the very at the very at the uh, very least if you do the rearm, um it deals 10 pure damage to anybody it hits on the way back. <laughs> well, that's that's a good that's a good means to keep throwing that to keep throwing that shield in a way that isn't going to piss me off. <laughs> Your shield has a gun in it. Why are you throwing it? And for anybody who's sick of the who's sick of me bringing up that story after all these years, too bad, because I told him I was never going to let that go. And now the monk has help never letting it go. <laughs> so, at tenth level, you gain divine strike. Eloa is the patron of those on hit on this path, and he le and he lends them a portion of his power. The skill has both an active and a passive effect. The passive effect: your weapon attacks inflict pure damage. What? <laughs> now it's my turn to go. What the fuck? What? Pure damage weapons? Okay. <laughs> Why not? And that's the passive. The active, you may activate the skill as an attack action. You launch yourself and all adversaries within a 5x5 five five area field around you, six squares into the air, and call down the divine wrath of Eloa upon them. Shards of, Par of Pardeos, Pardeos rain down, hurling adversaries to the ground. The adversaries take your level plus vitality in pure damage and are knocked prone. Five round cooldown. So your passive is now all my weapons just do pure damage. You, you fuck fuck your damage resistance. Fuck your armor. Pure damage. And your active is I do a thing that makes me call down literal swords from God. I didn't think we'd. I didn't think. I didn't think we'd see a paladin who casts, who casts weaponized swords of revealing light. Especially when I when I saw the launching yourself and all adver adversaries, I was like, "Wait, is this is this do is this Dante's devil trigger?" Something like that. Oh. You also gain respect and reverence. Those that meet you hold you in high regard. You are never without a room in which to stay. <laughs> in many civilized places, you are even given free food and a discount on fuel. It's there. because you're a paladin. Mm -hmm. and... Preservers are fucking paladins. Yeah. That are not that are not lawful stupid. I might add. They're lawful badass in this case. Actually, give, given given some of the jokes that we've made, 
You know who you know who you know who the preserve who the preserver field the preserver knight is? Reinhardt. Yep, fucking Reinhardt. Charging charging with a sh giant light shield and hammer. Yeah. Uh, at level 15 you gain greater purpose. You gain 3 expertise points. You permanently gain an additional 2 squares of base movement. If an ally would reach 0 HP in your Divine Shield, they would instead be healed to 15 HP. This may trigger once per day per person. Wow! <laughs> so, you move faster, you get three, exper three more expertise, so three more things you can purchase, mm -hmm. potentially. And... Once per day per person, if your divine shield's up and a friend's about to go down, no, they get 15 HP back. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you've got all those skills from earlier. Oh, God! My friend just went down and barely got back up! Fuck you! Jump charge over there and you're gonna eat shit now, pal! <laughs> and oh, at God. level 20, you gain Divinal Bloodline. The bloodline of the Divinals resides within you. You may unleash your bloodline as an extra action in combat or freely outside of combat. Six wings of fire burst from your back, encasing you and your weapons in a divine flame. Adjacent adversaries immediately take 40 fire damage. Adversaries that start or end their turn adjacent to you take 10 damage. Allies' weapons within five squares of you catch fire and inflict burning on their target. This lasts for five rounds and may only be used once per short rest. You be you get the wings of a biblically accurate angel. Monk. It's a holy avenger. <laughs> yes. You you literally act go from paladin to holy avenger for you know. Mm. That's that's a capstone. That's a fucking capstone. That is a fucking capstone. Oh yeah. And all of that is non-exclusive, which makes it, which makes it all fucking worse. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna to, be a. I'm gonna. I'm beginning to see go. why Trevor was excited uh, for us to cover um. For us the to old cover this night. Mess tonight. <laughs> I, I am um, I'm, I'm gonna be a preserver uh, uh, architect, monk. I'm gonna be a preserver architect. Do my bots count as weapons for the purposes of the divine damage, pure damage thing, divine strike? I need to know this. I am. I am going to. I'm going to have to ask if somebody hasn't already beaten me to the question. Yeah, but I need to know if a, if a, if an ar if an architect uses divine or has divine strike. Do their bots now all deal pure damage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now we get to the war now we get to the warlord. Warlords channel their adrenaline to increase damage. They revel in bloodshed during a battle. They have learned to utilize their adrenaline to improve their damage output and movement. So, so we've gone from a paladin to a corn berserker. Mm -hmm. So we had we had the we had the we had the paladin earlier. Now we have Karn the Betrayer. It was a really cool. Meh. Guy. So we start we start with Field of War. Before a jump charge, you may overpower your rocket boots. You do not drag a target with you, but every adversary you charge through takes two times vitality in fire and piercing damage. If your charge goes the full distance without interruption, a field appears behind you in the line you charged. All beings within that field take an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, D6 plus 5 fire damage instantly. This field lasts two rounds and affects anyone that starts or ends their turn in it. Three round cooldown. I don't think this qualifies necessarily as a corn berserker. This is the army of the damned. Yes. Or the firehawks, who are always on fire. 
Yes. Or the salamanders who just love fire. Mm -hmm. You also gain Adrenal Flame. You have learned how to use the rush of adrenaline in adversaries to harm them. As an extra action after a successful hit, you may activate this ability. If you do so, they must make a contested vitality check. If they fail, they take power plus two times battle charges in fire damage. This may only be successfully used on the same adversary once every three rounds. But that's only on the same adversary. If there are enough adversaries, you can rotate through them to hit with Adrenal Flame every turn. And again, this is one of those ones where it doesn't spend the battle charges and is just using them as a modifier. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Yep. So at level this is all about fire. Yeah. At level 10, you gain Blood Curse. As a reaction, you may expand your field of war by one square on each <sighs> side. All adversaries are within are Blood Cursed for three rounds. The next time this adversary takes damage from a party member, they take an additional 2d6 force damage, lose their reactions, and the curse expires. Four round cooldown. Blut and v Blut und Flammen. <laughs> Blood and fire. You also gain feared warriors. The knights that follow this path are feared for their temper. You gain plus one bonus level in the Intimidation skill. You can find discounted Roman board without an Intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> this is just... This is this is like your respect and reverence, um, except now it's because people are afraid of you rather than respectful of you. I'm reminded of the, of, of the promise that we saw with the level up Barbarian. <laughs> people doing things for you based on your reputation mm -hmm. yeah at level 15 you gain boil blood you may as an extra action immediately cause the blood curse ability on a on adversaries to overheat adversaries must perform a contested vitality check on a failure they take your level plus vitality and fire and piercing damage oh so it's exalted's blood of boiling oil <sighs> so get into the thick of it, inflict blood curse on on enemies trying to fight you, and then oh and then overheat and then overheat that blood curse. Yeah. And then four rounds later do it all again. Yeah. Wait, this doesn't say that by boiling blood they uh it it, it the curse expires though. Nope, so you can keep do you can keep doing it. I think mm -hmm. some 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 clarification would be nice, mm -hmm. but as at, at, as written, you can keep boiling blood until one of your friends or you hits them, and then they take the force damage, lose their reaction, and then the curse expires. Mm -hmm. At and at level twenty, you gain blood cry. Any creatures taunted by your cry of power are immediately a afflicted with blood curse. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Which means they've got to get in close. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Oh, and Doomsday Countdown. At the start of combat, roll 1d6 plus 2. Remove a point at the end of each round. When the count reaches 0... Regardless of whether it is your turn or not, you launch an explosive attack. All adversaries within a 21 by 21 field around you are targeted and hit by your launched missiles automatically, inflicts in, inflicting Y times vitality and pure damage, where Y is the D6 plus 1 total. Oh, you're literally just ticking down to an ultimate attack throughout the encounter. Mm -hmm. That's that's not terrifying or anything. <laughs> no. That is... Um, I I have to say that the warlord being the only exclusive. Um, do you know who this feels? Who, who this reminds me of? Who? The Black fucking Templars. 
Yes, I, I can. Do Dorn's it. Angry Boys. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Dorn's Best Boys? Dorn hates Helbrecht. <laughs> All the more reason to like him because Dorn has a has a nuclear level stick up his ass. Nuclear level stick of of complete and utter seriousness and liter literal interpretation. So now, we finally get to the Juggernaut, bitch! <laughs> Juggernauts thrive in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Each swing of theirs sends their foes flying across the battlefield. Few can stand against these brutes for long. I'm in this and I don't like it. <laughs> it's because you're black. Fuck off! <laughs> I haven't gotten to pull that joke off in a while. You were holding that one, weren't you? Maybe. Yeah, you were. Anyway, at the start, they gain Boundless Fury. You gain plus one bonus level in muscle and an extra attack action while equipped with fist weapons or barehanded. Your fist weapons are equipped with rockets and chains, granting you plus two squares of additional attack range. A chain fist. Mm -hmm. A huh. rocket chain fist. Majin Kaiser's skull? What? <laughs> you also gain ceaseless strikes. Every time you successfully hit a target with your fists, your target gains the unique condition Exhaustion. Once the target gains six stacks of exhaustion, you may perform a debilitating strike attack as an extra action. On success, your target loses all exhaustion points and takes your vitality plus power in force damage. They must then perform a contested vitality check. On failure, they are knocked prone. So this is just you punching them until they can't stand up anymore. Mm -hmm. That's all this is. Yeah. It is a less shitty flurry of blows. Well, I don't think it's flurry of blows. It's just every time you attack, they get exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Once they have six exhaustion, you get the ability to perform debilitating strike yep. and fuck them up further. Mm -hmm. At level 10, you gain Tavern Brawler. While fighting in medium-sized, i.e. 15 by 20 squares, or smaller battlefields, you may add pips to a third die. As an action, you may activate the rocket chains in your power fists. If you do, target an adversary within your base movement and perform a contested muscle vitality check. On success, pull them to you. So, um, you know how you know how I joked about about um, high time and Helmbreaker. Here's our yeah. de here's our devil bringer. Mm-hmm. At level fifteen, at level fifteen, you gain devastating repost. When you successfully deflect a weapon with your fists, you may strike back with one auto hit die. If this attack hits, inflict your attack's damage and knock the adversary prone. And known fighter, you can always find free room and board in taverns where there are brawls or a fighting arena nearby. Again, the reputation thing. Mm -hmm. And at 20th level, you gain All-Consuming Rage. Once per battle, all conditions are removed and you are protected from all incoming damage. Negative movement conditions have no effect on you until the rage expires. Attacks inflict your vitality and additional force damage. You cannot be healed or regenerate energy shields in this form. This form lasts for three full rounds or until dismissed. There's your actual barbarian yeah. monk. Oh, a, barba uh. a barbarian brawler. Yeah, that sounds like a barbarian. It's it's a pugilist. This is it. This <laughs> is a pier this is a fucking pier six pugilist. <laughs> and I told you that it was gonna be a dwarf. 
I told you it was going to be a fucking dwarf. Did I not say it was going to be a fucking dwarf? We see how those rocket fists work, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's they're incoms. Got it. Yep. And I think... I think when it comes to the when it comes to the field night again, I can see I can see why Trevor w was excited about us tackling this one. It's fucking good. That's why. Yeah. Um. I get the feeling that he I get the feeling that with the field night he wanted to make a tank, but without all without all this stuff that annoys people about tanks, namely the fact that they just sit around and do one thing. So he basically wanted to make any of the tanking classes from Final Fantasy fourteen. Got it. Because even with the most basic paladin, you do not just sit there doing one thing. Yes, the paladin is the most boring, but it's still a whole, hell of a lot more engaging than tanks in some other games. Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> you really need to get that look at. Maybe. Oh. <sighs> but I'd I'd say the preser the pre I would say that the preserve that the preserver is a the preserver is akin to a paladin, but it's a ridiculous ass paladin. I don't think I've seen paladins I... this ridiculous in a while. I fucking love it. Yeah, I fucking love it. The... If I were gonna play a field knight, I'd probably play a preserver. I'm not gonna lie. The warlord is. You know what? Fuck it. He's the angry marines. Mm hmm. And <laughs> although the although that could have and the juggernaut is I'm trying I'm trying to think what is what is what probably happens when ne when when um neophyte space wolves get too drunk is there such a thing as too drunk on the on the planet of Fenris? Like I said, neophytes. They probably they probably just they probably just had their taste of the kind of of the extremely strong kind of drink that Fenris puts out simply to try and get <laughs> the space wolves drunk. True. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was commit if it was if it was handled by um by the Assassin House v Venom. <laughs> Or maybe it's just Russ making drinks out of the um, bile bile ducts and livers of demons. That could that could certainly be a th that could certainly be a thing. Um, we do know we do know that the wh we do know that the wh the white scars have doom have doom Rider's head uh, head in one of the in one of their places. Mm hmm. Um. The head is still alive and reminding it, reminding everyone that it does cocaine. But this is, you know how you know how we last week we had said that the field knight, not the not the field knight, but the uh, combat medic, very much goes against type because of the fact that you cannot play an effective com at a combat medic at its most effective by being pa by being the passive healer. You have to be mm -hmm. into the thick of things. Mm -hmm. The field, the field knight is very much a case of you are not, you are not trying to be the typical tank who just, who just sit, who just sits in the front and takes and takes all the damage while, while the interesting people do the interesting things. No, you're no. If you show up in the battlefield, especially at the higher levels, shit is gonna get fucked up. Yeah. This is this is the I'd say of the classes so far. This is the one who, when it arrives, um, everybody starts hearing Mick Gordon music. <laughs> oh. Now, as far as, but so so far we're, so far we're doing we're we're three for three when it comes to good classes. I feel like that trend is going to continue, especially given. What we've got next, we have our first, we, next week we will have our first honest to god casting class, which means that the episode is going to be at least twice as long. 
I, I I'm kidding. I actually don't think it'll take you know two hours. No, the really long ones won't be for a bit, but they will be coming. I I love I love the fact that um there's going to be a lot of stuff to go into here. Mm-hmm. But that but we'll we'll have that we'll have that to look forward to. Ne- um next week next week as we continue our journey through the valley of the judged but until then on behalf of the good brothers present and not present my name is mildra i am your gaming monk stay fucking frosty everybody <laughs>